ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಪಿಯೋ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಐಮ್ ರುಕ್ಮಣಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪೊನ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾಶ್ರಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅ ಪೋಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ರೀಡರ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆಥರ್ ಆಲ್ಫ್ರೆಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಟೆನಿಸನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ let us know some information about the author alfred tennyson was born on august 6 1809 in lincolnshire england the fourth sibling in 12 he showed an early interest in writing and had penned down a 6000 line epic at the age of 12 He escaped home with his brother Charles in 1827 due to the troubled environment at home and attended the Trinity College in London. The two brothers published a book of poems and he later published two volumes of poetry which gained critical appraisal with time. Tennyson was a poet laureate, one of the most popular poets of the Victorian era. He gained substantially from his work and appeared tall as a large and bearded man with a booming voice. In 1884, he became Alfred Lord Tennyson. He passed away on October 6, 1892 and was buried in Westminster Abbey. so this is all about the author now let us know some information about the poem so before getting into the poem let me just once again tell you the title of the poem the title of the poem is break 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 it is a short poem dealing with loss it opens and continues to speak in a dark tone of the crushing rocks in the sea and the elements that thrive in it to describe his inner disturbance on being separated from a close friend it primarily mentions the booming sound of the sea coupled with the fisherman and the sailor and the ships that sail in it the poem moves in a negative manner around the inevitable phenomenon that is death and reflect the poet's sorrow caused by the death of a closed one entwined with the setting of the sea this poem is an apt example of an elegy a kind of poetry based on lamenting a lost close relation it closes with the poet saying a day that is dead shall never come back to me and the purpose of describing the gory of separation is accomplished so what do you mean by elegy elegy is a form of literature that can be defined as a poem or song written in honor of someone deceased okay children now we saw the introduction of the poem so after this we are going to read the content so now let's read the content and let me give the explanation now let me read the first stanza of the poem so the first stanza of the poem starts with a line break 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 on thy cold gray stones o sea and i would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that arise in me i repeat break 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 
on thy cold grey stones o sea and i would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that arise in me so in the first answer the poet says that the torment of his heart is tremendous there is a struggle like the struggle of sea waves on the stormy shores the question before him is how he can express adequately the thoughts which are rushing in his mind now let me read the second stanza oh well for the fisherman's boy that he shouts with his sister at play oh well for the sailor lad that he sings in his boat on the bay i repeat oh well for the fisherman's boy that he shouts with his sister at play oh well for the sailor lad that he sings in his boat on the bay so in the second stanza the poet says that life is full of joy for the fisherman's son and daughter who are laughing and shouting merrily the poet on the other hand is entirely in a different mood he is restless and grief stricken at the death of his friend the poet admires the innocent joy of these youngsters but he is sorry because he cannot share it the lad of the sailor is also happy and sings in his boat face to face with the magnificence of the sea but such joy is not for the poet now let me read the third stanza and the stately ships go on to their haven under the hill but oh for the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still let me repeat and the stately ships go on to their haven under the hill but oh for the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still so here in this third stanza the poet says that the majestic ships ply on their destination under the hill the poet however has no definite plan about his life and he misses his friend halam whose voice and touch were so soft and tender the grief of the poet is terribly intense so now let us read the fourth stanza break 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 at the foot of thy cracks o sea but the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me i repeat break 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 at the foot of thy cracks o sea but the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me so in this fourth stanza the poet asks the waves to go on a striking against the sea shore but the poet cannot recall the past experience which he enjoyed in the company of his friend god had been very kind in blessing him with the tender friendship of halam but the past cannot be recalled now let me discuss 
the theme of the poem. So what is the theme of the poem? It's nothing but death. The poem is indirectly about death. However, Tennyson also refers to it directly. The metaphor in stanza 3 alludes to death. And the stately ships go on to their heaven under the hill. The ship is a metaphor of life now gone to its rest. Then the poet speaks about the hand that vanished and the voice that is still. The opening stanzas make no such reference to the poet's dead friend but merely prepare the reader for it. So another direct reference to death occurs in the last stanza speaking of the figurative death of the day. But the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me. So this is all about the theme of the poem. Now let us discuss this stanza form. The poem consists of four stanzas. Each stanza consists of four lines, thus called as quatrain. In the first and last stanzas, the poet addresses the sea, expressing his sadness and sense of loss. The middle two stanzas present images of joy and happiness. The contrast helps highlight the poet's sense of grief and loss. Now, let us discuss the poetry devices in this poem. The first one is rhyme scheme. So here the rhyme scheme followed in all the four stanzas is A, B, C, B. The next literary device that we are going to discuss is refrain. What do you mean by refrain? So refrain is nothing but a phrase, line or a group of lines repeated at intervals throughout a poem. Generally at the end of the stanza. So here you can just see the line break, break, break. So repeated in the poem. Paradox is a statement that is apparently contradictory. So a statement which appears to contradict itself is called as paradox. So example war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. So all these statements come under this figure of speech, paradox, says we have touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still. And the next figure of speech in this poem is onomatopoeia. It is the figure of speech in which the sound of the words echoes their meaning. The word break sounds like something breaking. It is intended to echo the sound of the waves breaking against the rock. These are some of the literary devices of this poem. So go through the poem and find out the difficult words, understand them and write the meaning. So now we have come to the end of this session. Hope you understood the explanation about the content of this poem. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day children.